Hello everyone, welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ILO Pathology. Today I am going to discuss a very important topic in hemodynamic disorders that is shock. Okay, we will be discussing particularly the concepts of septic shock. So the overview of this talk will be, we will know what is the definition of shock, what are the various types of shock, what is the pathogenesis of septic shock and its clinical features. Now, what is shock? Shock is a state of circulatory failure which impairs tissue perfusion and that leads to cellular hypoxia. In the initial stages of shock, the whatever the effects, you know, they will be reversible but ultimately in the prolonged stage of shock, the effects will be irreversible. That's very important to know that if the initial phases of shock is not managed properly, then there will be irreversible damage to the tissues. Now, what are the different types of shock? Shock can be classified into cardiogenic shock, hypovolemic shock, septic shock and neurogenic shock. So let us understand what is this cardiogenic shock. It's basically there is a myocardial pump failure which leads to low cardiac output. Okay, the various causes for a cardiogenic shock includes myocardial infarction, various arrhythmias, cardiac tamponade, even pulmonary embolism can result in cardiogenic shock. The second one is hypovolemic shock. Here, there will be low blood volume and that leads to low cardiac output. Instances like massive hemorrhage, extensive burns, which might result in extensive fluid loss that results in low blood volume and then that leads to low cardiac output and that is hypovolemic shock. The third one is septic shock. Now, there are three entities we need to understand. One, sepsis, two, septic shock and three, systemic inflammatory response syndrome. Now, what is sepsis? Sepsis is a life-threatening organ dysfunction which is caused by a dysregulated host response to a given infection. That is sepsis. Now, what is this septic shock? It's a subset of sepsis where there will be profound circulatory, cellular and metabolic abnormalities. Whereas, systemic inflammatory response syndrome is a sepsis-like condition which is associated with systemic inflammation, but remember it is non-microbial insult induced. Okay, so these two will be because of infections. These are not infections. This is a sepsis-like condition, which is not associated with any microbial insult. So that is systemic inflammatory response syndrome. Now what happens in sepsis and septic shock or say SIRS for that matter? What happens here is that the innate and adaptive immune cells are activated where that releases lots of inflammatory mediators which causes vasodilatation, arterial vasodilatation, the vascular leakage and venous blood pooling. So all the effects of all these things will be tissue hypoperfusion. Okay. Once there is tissue hypoperfusion that leads to cellular hypoxia and various metabolic abnormalities and that results to organ dysfunction, ultimately the organ a failure which might lead to death. So this is in just about what happens in septic shock and SIRS. Now moving on to the another type of shock which is called neurogenic shock which is seen in spinal cord injuries. There's another uh, entity called anaphylactic shock which is IgE mediated hypersensitivity reaction. In both these types of shock, the underlying mechanism is same which means there will be acute vasodilatation and that leads to hypotension okay and hypotension leading to tissue hypoperfusion leading to shock so we now know different types of shock right the cardiogenic shock hypovolemic shock septic shock neurogenic and anaphylactic shock now we will understand in detail about the pathogenesis of septic shock Septic shock is most commonly triggered by gram-positive gram bacilli which is followed by gram-negative bacilli and fungi. Substances from these organisms, whether it is a gram-positive bacilli or a gram-negative bacilli or fungi, the substances from these microorganisms, you know, they stimulate and activate these cells. The macrophages, the neutrophils, dendritic cells, endothelial cells and even the complement pathways. And once these are activated and that leads to various inflammatory and counter inflammatory response. Okay. So the end result of this response will be septic shock. Okay. Leading on to the organ failure and death.
Now we will understand what really we mean by inflammatory and counter inflammatory response and how thus that result in septic shock and organ failure. Now these microorganisms contain certain substances like you know the pathogen associated molecular patterns or damage associated molecular patterns. They are called PAMPS and DAMPS. Okay. So they can also be bacterial peptides. Now for all these substances there will be a receptor on a given cell membrane. The cell can be macrophage, the endothelial cell, the neutrophils, or lymphocytes or whatever. Okay. For all these, they will have a receptor. For example, for these PAMPS and DAMPS, you have a toll like receptors. And for a bacterial peptide, you have G protein coupled receptor and C type lectin receptors. Now, whenever these substances the receptor, this is a receptor, this is a ligand, you know, whenever there is a ligand receptor interaction, what happens? So any of these can happen, you know, the bacterial peptides can bind or PAMPs, DMPs can bind. So whenever these uh, ligand receptor interaction happen, that leads to activation and nuclear translocation of nuclear factor kappa beta, which further increases the expression of genes which encodes inflammatory mediators. Okay, that means lots and lots of inflammatory mediators are produced, which includes tumor necrosis factor, interleukin 1, interleukin 12, interleukin 18, interferon gamma and many other chemical mediators. Okay, now we know that the microbial products which stimulates these cells to release these chemical mediators and other cytokines, right? So apart from this, the microbial products also activate endothelial cells the vascular endothelial cells are activated and these cytokines you know they also activate endothelial cells so endothelial cells are activated either directly by the microbial products or by the cytokines which are released by these cells which in turn are uh, stimulated by these microbial products now what happens by these cytokines all these cytokines results in the systemic effects of inflammation okay systemic effects include fever it can be you know various metabolic abnormalities like acidosis it can even cause decrease in myocardial function okay ultimately all these effects if it is not controlled if there is lots and lots of these cytokines final outcome is multi-organ failure so multi-organ failure this is not the only pathway for multi-organ failure what are the other pathways as I told you, the microbial products and these cytokines also activate endothelial cells, right? And these endothelial cells in turn release interleukin-6, interleukin-8, nitric oxide and reactive oxygen species, okay? So all these further leads to vasodilatation, increased vascular permeability, decreased perfusion. So that also results in multi-organ failure. Now, microbial products also activates complements. It could be three, you know, activation of C3A, C5A and C3B. Most of it are pro-inflammatory. Some of it, you know, they also further activate endothelial cells and these cycles continue. So apart from these three actions, microbial products directly can activate factor 12. That leads to increase in tissue factor, decrease in thrombomodulin and protein C. The endothelial cells also does this. So factor 12 activation and activation of endothelial cells results in these things which is a pro-coagulant state. Endothelial, endothelial cell activation also results in increase in PAI1 plasminogen activator inhibitor 1 and that is antifibrinolytic. Now on one hand you have pro-coagulant activity, on other hand you have antifibrinolytic activity. What does that mean? That results in microvascular thrombosis. The combined effect of these two results in microvascular thrombosis which further leads to ischemia and finally multi-organ failure. I hope you have understood the reasons for multi-organ failure by these microbial products and so this is essentially the pathogenesis of septic shock and this is an inflammatory response. Now I told you there will be inflammatory and counter inflammatory response right. So what is that? That means these cells can also release interleukin 10. They also stimulate apoptosis. So what does that mean? That means these are anti-inflammatory in nature, which results in immunosuppression. So basically the microbial products, the pathogenesis of septic shock includes both inflammatory and 
counter inflammatory mechanisms which one predominates depends upon the type of the host now the severity and outcome of septic shock depends upon one important thing is host immune status second it also depends upon the extent and virulence of the infection and associated comorbid conditions if the patient is already having comorbid conditions like diabetes mellitus and other diseases you know that means the outcome of septic shock is not good now it also depends upon the pattern and level of mediator production whether the mediator production is towards inflammation or towards anti inflammation that also depends on how they are activated okay and that affects the outcome of septic shock now what are the stages of shock so once we have understood the mechanism and the pathogenesis of septic shock so what are the stages of shock but the, this these you know stages of shock are best understood in hypovolemic shock okay so it will be three stages one an initial non progressive stage which leads to a progressive stage and finally an irreversible stage what happens in initial non progressive stage basically all the compensatory mechanisms are activated the reflex compensatory mechanisms are act activated which helps in vital organ perfusion and the organs are maintained the perfusion is maintained ultimately there will be hypovolemia right so because of hypovolemia all the reflex compensatory mechanisms are activated the perfusion is maintained now if the underlying condition is not treated then it goes to a progressive stage where there is profound tissue hypoperfusion and that is where the onset of worsening circulatory and metabolic derangement starts okay and finally it leads to a reversible stage where there will be severe cellular and tissue injury that is what the cause for multi organ failure so these are the clinical stages of shock the clinical features depends upon the stage of shock in the case of hypovolemic and cardiogenic shock there will be profound hypotension that is manifested by weak rapid pulse tachypnea cool clammy cyanotic skin okay remember it is cool skin whereas in the case of septic shock the skin will be warm and flushed that's because of peripheral vasodilatation so the morphology of shock basically is because of hypoxic injury you know which is caused by hypoperfusion and microvascular thrombosis we know the cause for hypoperfusion right because of all those mechanisms we have studied just now and because and microvascular thrombosis because of procoagulant and anti fibrinolytic activity okay you have to find evidence for these two things so the brain heart kidneys adrenals and gastrointestinal tract are most commonly involved although any organ can be involved right so in the case of lungs there will be diffuse alveolar damage and that is where you call that lung as shock lung and you can find evidence of thrombi particularly fibrin thrombi in various tissues most commonly found in renal glomeruli it's easy to appreciate microthrombi fibrin thrombi in renal glomeruli so that will be the morphology of shock in kidneys now how do you manage a case of shock you have to treat the underlying infection and support a supportive treatment by giving intravenous fluids vasopressors supplemental oxygen basically to maintain blood pressure and limit tissue hypoxia So in summary we understood the definition of shock the various types of shock and in detail we understood the pathogenesis of septic shock and then we concluded with understanding the basic clinical features and a bit about management of of shock thank you for watching if you have liked this video please hit the like button do comment do subscribe and don't forget to share i'll be coming out with many more topics in general pathology and systemic pathology thank you